I'd like to officially welcome you to Sarajevo. It's in Bosnia. And this place has a ton of history, spanning many different eras. We, of course, are going to focus on the more recent stuff. If you consider World War I recent, so I think that a lot of people who are into history would probably first and foremost like to see the very spot where the assassination of the heir to the Austrian throne, when Franz Ferdinand took place in 1914, leading up to the start of World War I. The little bridge that you're seeing right there was where the first attempt on Franz Ferdinand's life took place that day as he drove around in an open car with his wife. On the main road, just on the other side of the river here. And the car was coming in this direction, just over the river, when the first attempt was made on his life when a guy threw a bomb at the car and the bomb just kind of bounced off the back of the car and into the road where it exploded. And uh, as you can imagine, that was a bit of a shock to the heir to the Austrian throne somebody throwing a bomb at his car and the party continued down that direction opposite side of the river there toward the town hall or the city hall in Sarajevo where the uh, Archduke Franz Ferdinand would be received and give a speech. Let's go down and see what that building looks like today. The Moorish looking building right here is the Sarajevo City Hall. And that is where Franz Ferdinand and his party stopped to have a reception and he gave a little speech and also expressed a bit of concern about the fact that he'd already faced an attempted assassination that morning. And when they left this building, they headed back down along the river with the intention of visiting some of the people who had been wounded in the earlier attack and attempt on his life. It was just down the road that he would face his final moments as an assassin would approach and kill both Franz Ferdinand and his wife right down there at the Latin Bridge. Let's go see what it looks like today. And so they were approaching this Latin Bridge when the driver of Franz Ferdinand's car took a wrong turn and he was following two other cars in the same convoy in front of him and those two cars had turned away from the river off to the right unplanned Franz Ferdinand's driver decided all right if they're going that way I guess I am too and so they t they turned away from the river only to be sort of yelled at by one of the higher ranking people in the uh, car with Franz Ferdinand and his wife saying hey you're going the wrong way man get back on the planned route which ran along the river here so I'll show you the spot where they turned off and then stopped when it was said we need to uh, get back on path right back on the planned route so let's see if we can get across the street here Right, we'll get situated, it's kind of a busy spot, but they would have been coming down this way and then turned into this little alleyway. It was right across the street here where the driver of Franz Ferdinand's car stopped in front of what at that time was a deli. And some sources have it saying that he stalled the car and had to sort of get out of the car for some reason to try to restart it. Other sources say that the car had some trouble with the reverse gear and so he was actually getting out and trying to push it back out onto the uh, route that goes along the river. For whatever reason, we don't know exactly why, had a little bit of a delay here and it was then, right over here, I'll show you the exact spot that the assassin approached the car quite closely and you can see how the street's been narrowed since then so 
There's four metal plates marking where the car stopped, and so the street would have been a bit wider, presumably, at that time. And you can see those four metal markers where the tires would have been contacting the road with a little metal plaque in the middle of it, which just says 1914. And you can see there's a marker here that's been there a while stating that this was the exact place on June 28 of 1914, the assassin standing right there. So that's what the site of the very significant assassination of Archduke Franz Ferdinand took place. And this is what it looks like today. I would like now to turn to what I am most interested in and why I'm really here visiting Sarajevo. And that involves Yugoslavia and the breakup thereof. It was this experiment, a bunch of ethnicities all kind of brought together. And uh, this experiment of Yugoslavia seemed for quite a while to be working. The country was for a time during the Cold War era, not only quite successful, but also quite unique in its uh, foreign relations and its standing in the world. And so, Unfortunately, all of that promise of Yugoslavia came crashing down in the early 1990s when the ethnic tensions of all these different peoples started to take hold. And unfortunately, it was something that uh, really impacted Sarajevo especially because this city was surrounded on all sides from the hills above for a very long time and mortar shells for example would come raining down that is an example of where one of those would have landed I experienced this breakup of Yugoslavia and the war on the nightly news and all of these um, these different places that you would hear about Sarajevo among them and the pictures that you would see were pictures of people scurrying through the streets, trying to avoid sniper fire, trying to avoid the mortars that would sometimes crash down on this city. And so why I'm really here, first and foremost, is to see what's it like today? What was the impact of all of that on this city and I think that there's one place perhaps that represents that time period that tragic period of the mid 90s more than any other place here it would have to be the Marcali market and that is where two explosions actually took place one of them in 1994 the other 1995 in both cases apparently this busy market full of sellers and buyers was targeted by essentially mortar shelling. And so that is our next stop. We're going to see the very site at the Marcali Market where one of those mortars exploded. They're just getting started here on an early Sunday morning at the Marcali Market, setting up all of the produce that they'll sell here today. And it was on a day kind of like this, a winter day, when there were a lot of people here, when a mortar shell struck. And we have, um, to this day, the very spot where one of those shells impacted the ground, right down here. And I shall show it to you now. First, I want to point out the flowers, which are here today. Hopefully you can see those back there and then behind the flowers you have the plaque which um, explains the events that took place here and now I'll show you the exact spot in the ground where one of those mortar shells struck 
and hopefully you can get an idea of all of the shrapnel, etc., that would have come flying off of that shell. And you can see how a lot of the damage from the shrapnel has been filled in today by a red resin, which is known as a Sarajevo rose. So winding things down, what did I learn from my trip to Sarajevo after seeing all of that um, negative stuff unfold on TV during the 1990s? I found that uh, there are still scars that people bear, but hopefully those scars are less and less. And I, for one, am rooting for this city and its people. In closing, I'd like to tell you the story of a little souvenir that I wanted to buy, and that is Vuko, who was the uh, mascot of the 1984 Sarajevo Olympics. I didn't have the right money to buy this, and I asked a local person, could I give them some euros to get some local money to buy it? And they said, we're going to buy that for you. It's a gift from Sarajevo. So this will be going onto every fridge that I ever own from here on out. Thank you.